I made a simple patch that started out as a sine wave and I kept adding things to it and then I wrote a bunch of stuff to velocity and key tracking and I'm going to go over the patch and maybe give you some ideas as to what you can do with the velocity and key mapping in Faceplant. So I made a simple melody that I repeat an octave up because I wanted a lot of range in the notes. I also gave the notes very different velocities so I could get a lot of variety with the velocity tracking as well. I'm going to start in the generators and work my way through instead of just going over what the velocity tracking does and the note tracking because it's kind of confusing to look through all the snap-ins for everything because there's a lot of routing in here. So the patch was originally a sine wave. It's got harmonics unison on it which is more obvious with higher notes. I have note tracking on the blend which brings it in. On the shift I have an envelope which is just a little transient envelope and phase is routed to velocity so louder notes will have the waveform start at a higher amplitude. On the output it looks kind of weird because it doesn't sound like this most of the time but velocity is mapped to the attack so louder notes equals less attack and also decay so louder notes equals more decay. So quieter notes are going to fade in a bit more slowly. This was a bit different I have note tracking mapped to the panning on the sine wave, so I thought of it almost as like a, a really long keyboard. So the lower notes are on the left side of your head, and the higher notes are on the right side, so it's a bit like sitting at a piano, although maybe a, a bit exaggerated. Then I have velocity mapped to noise level, so I get a bit of a transient click with noise on louder notes. Slope is routed to note tracking, so on higher notes the slope is going to be more of a white noise and lower notes will be more pink noise so louder notes will be brighter then I have it going into a bandpass filter and there's no tracking on the cutoff and the cue just to open up the noise more for the higher notes and then I have it going into this aux module which is basically just sending it to another group it's not going out in this one I have it going into this output envelope which has more decay for louder notes. And that's the generator section more or less. Okay, so starting off the effects, I have phase distortion and the drive is being modulated by the note tracking. Tone is being modulated by the note tracking and mix is being modulated by velocity. In the fatturator, three more parameters are being changed around. So velocity is modulating drive, note is modulating fuzz, and note is also modulating color for basically opening up the sound and then drive obviously is to make the sound more harmonically rich on louder notes very common with filters it's to track the cutoff actually this works fairly well with both note tracking and velocity because when you play louder notes the filter opens up and when you play higher notes the filter opens up which is a fairly it's a fairly natural thing i, I believe so in the ring mod, I have the transient envelope below modulating the mix a little bit. And velocity also gives the mix a bit of a boost on louder notes. Um, note tracking on the frequency. And this is noise based, by the way. So I have even more noise. Then I have a pitch shifter and the grain size is routed to the note and mix is routed to velocity. So louder notes equals another octave up. Should, I should note that the velocity only goes to 47%, so there's always that original octave in there. It doesn't completely replace it, just doubles it up. Transient shaping, so velocity is modulating the attack and sustain. It's more of a roundabout way of modulating the gain. I have a resonator on here, and it comes in on louder notes. And then a bit of compression because there was a bit more dynamic range than I needed. Reverb isn't doing anything, and this is another reverb I made out of resonators, and I'm going to be covering this in another video, I think, because it's another thing all on its own. 
more filter tracking. So with note tracking, if you can, you probably should be key tracking your filter cutoffs so you can get more consistent filtering. I'm doing that here with the high pass. The note is modulating the cutoff, except here I have a different note modulator because I changed the range on the original one, so it moved more. This one covers the whole keyboard, so that was what I needed for this particular filter, as well as this high shelf. So what's going on here is on louder notes, the gain goes down because the sound gets really bright and I didn't want it to get as bright as it did. So that really tames the high frequencies a good amount, but not too much. So the sound is still pretty bright. And the last snap-in is a compressor. And what's going on here is on higher notes, the sound is lucky and very bright and it can be kind of fatiguing to listen to that kind of noise for prolonged periods of time so I just bring the threshold down so it doesn't get as loud. This is a velocity based patch so I wanted that dynamic range but too much can kind of hurt the ears a little bit. And I have poly engaged on each note. This is definitely something to pay attention to when you're doing velocity tracking and note tracking because if you're not doing poly, you're not going to get MIDI input for every note necessarily if you're playing a lot of notes at once. What might happen is certain notes are skipped, the note tracking doesn't react to some of the notes, and if you're using a patch that is really based on note tracking like this, you definitely want poly engaged. I think I'll just play the patch once so you can hear how it sounds without effects. So that's without effects. This is with the first lane on. 